Welcome to the People and Performance Podcast, featuring guest experts from such global brands as NASA, Salesforce, the Milwaukee Bucks, Staples Professional, IBM, Mutual of America, Zero, and Simon Sinek Inc. The show offers expert insights into the strategic capabilities and behaviors needed to grow and sustain employee performance. Welcome to another episode of the People and Performance Podcast. Hello, this is Bill Bannum, your co-host of the show. It's day two of the awesome Unleash America Conference and Expo in fabulous Las Vegas. And in this episode of the People and Performance Pod, we're going to chat with a leader of one of the awesome companies exhibiting in Sin City. Chris Bjorning and I are joined this time by Shai David, co-founder, chairman and CEO over at retrain.ai, a talent intelligence platform designed to help enterprises hire, retain, and develop their workforce intelligently. Listen as we discuss Unleash, plus we talk about how we can ensure generative AI in the workplace is used in ethical ways. Chris and I hope that you enjoyed this episode, and if you do, as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Shai, welcome today. Hey, can you take a minute and introduce yourself to our audience? Great to be here, Chris and Bill. Uh, my name is Shai, Dr. Shai David, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Retrain.ai. Excellent. And we're so glad to have you today. So first question for you, how is generative AI like ChatGPT changing and improving the way we work? I think that we are at the edge of a new paradigm. Generative AI is all about taking human knowledge and really taking it to the next level. Unlike search engines that basically are big, large indexes of human knowledge, generative AI has the power to combine different parts of knowledge into something new, hence the generative aspect of generative AI. And in that sense, we're going to see bodies of knowledge that either we didn't know existed or that didn't connect in the way that generative AI can connect them. And in that sense, There are many different tasks that generative AI can assist. Some of them are human-like, some of them are superhuman-like. And I think we're just beginning to see that in every vertical market. We're going to see that in tax and accounting, in supply chain management, in travel, uh, and definitely in more mundane tax, like uh, scanning through documents or affidavits or or things like that. So in that sense, uh, true and big changes are coming. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Shai. So OpenAI has launched its API so that enterprises and vendors can build industry-specific chatbot chatbot solutions. Uh, What does this mean for the future of work? I think that we're going to see different vertical chatbots pretty much in every vertical. And OpenAI made it enterprise-grade or the beginning of enterprise-grade. What that means is that for enterprises to be able to build upon tools like that in their stack, The tools need to have a service level agreement. They need to have some level of transparency. They need to have a predictable pricing. And we're seeing the beginning of that. Once all those conditions have been met, different companies are going to be able to build verticalized solutions that do integration with the rest of the stack for every vertical and that rely on these general purpose tools. In that sense, it's not very different than the reliance on a few big cloud providers. It is different in the sense that people are going to have to take sides. If you're going to build on a chat GPT, that's going to be different than building on Google's Bard. Or if you are a government client, maybe you have your own government version of it. So I think we're beginning to see the foundations of a whole set of new tools and new stacks of technologies that are going to be built. And I think that we're going to see that across verticals. The People and Performance Podcast, supported by Fidelo Inc., is dedicated to offering tips and expert insights into the strategic capabilities and behaviors needed to establish, grow, and measure the performance of employees. If you enjoy the show, why not subscribe and give us five stars through your favorite podcast app? Okay, thank you very much. Let's talk now a little bit about using responsible AI to to help enterprises, Shai. How can we ensure that generative AI is used in the rights, and by that I mean ethical, ways? What kind of auditing, what kind of management, what kind of processes need to be in place uh, so that the the bots do things in the right way and they don't take over? 
So I think that's a great question. And I think we have to understand the risks that are associated with AI, which are, which are multiple. In order to understand that, the one thing we need to remember is that AI, in my view, is no more and no less than the capability of seeing patterns in large data sets. And one of the things that happens when we start seeing patterns in data sets is that those patterns amplify what the data has to tell us. So if, for example, we want to use AI to support hiring decisions and our hiring decisions in the past have been biased and we use that as a training set for the AI, then what's going to happen is that the AI is going to find those bias patterns and it's going to amplify them. That's a really big risk in the area of HR which is kind of what we do at, at Retrain. We use AI in order to help organizations hire, train, and develop their talent. And we have to deal with the potential for bias. That potential for bias exists in the data, but also, and this is to your question, in the way that the algorithms themselves are designed. In order for AI to be ethical, it has to also be transparent and responsible. And there are design principles of building AI in a way that A, does eliminate the bias and doesn't amplify it. B, is auditable to humans because sometimes these AIs tend to be black boxes. And C, actually has the capacity to alert its users to the potential harms and actually maybe help them solve that. And I think that there are guidelines today, some by the World Economic Forum, by several other industry groups, about what it means to be responsible by design, what it means to develop white boxes rather than black boxes. I think that the industry is beginning to wake up for it and definitely regulation in several states, including uh, New York State, for example, the regulators are paying a lot of attention to it because they want to make sure that if indeed we're building a new paradigm and these new systems are coming into sharp focus, then we're going to build them right. And just a quick follow up on that one, Shai, if I may, uh, specifically around uh, HR leaders, what what two or three things, just at a very high level, maybe in 60 seconds or less, what two or three things should HR folks be aware of when it comes to being compliant with uh, with, with this very rapidly expanding and, and growing technology and, and all the possibilities with, with AI? How, how, can they, how can they kind of keep ahead of the curve and, and uh, remain compliant? So, so first of all, I would recommend that HR leaders not be afraid of using AI. AI could really do miracles for HR because HR have been some of the last systems to be innovated upon within the stack. In many organizations, many of the other systems in the organization have already been revamped, reevaluated, modernized, and HR tends to be last because it's mission critical systems that have been working okay for years. And if it ain't broken, don't fix it. The challenge is that in many cases, it is broken. In many cases, uh, there are really outdated HR systems that no longer serve modern organizations. So tip number one for HR leaders is embrace AI, don't fight it, because it's going to make a big difference. But tip number two, directly following that, make sure that as you're looking for AI as decision support for core HR processes, that you're selecting a system that is transparent, that is auditable, and that has non-bias and bias prevention built into it. Many of the first generation AI systems coming into the market are really simplistic. You feed them a lot of data, they make recommendations, but they make recommendations based on this past performance. And in that sense, they achieve the opposite effect of non-bias. In fact, they amplify bias. So to summarize, embrace AI, but make sure you're embracing the type that's going to next generation that already has the responsibility, transparency, auditability built in. And there, luckily, there are a few vendors out there that are offering these systems today. Shai, thanks for that in information and insight into the utilization of AI in, inside of the HR space. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, it's it's kind of been historic that HR is taking all this data in and doing some analysis, but to um, upgrade it where you're actually importing the concepts like, like you've been just discussing is going to be great for the HR world to to grasp uh, and to actually mine their data better and to understand it and make the, the adjustments they need to, to, you know, improve the workforce. So it's exciting. So in, speaking of exciting, you're coming up and you're going to be participating in the Unleash America conference in Las Vegas, and it kicks off on April 26th. Your team will be on site booth um, B121. Let's repeat that for those that are listening. 
Unleash America Conference booth B121. So why don't you give us a little bit of an overview of the event and why you des desi decided to exhibit there? So this is a, a really an event which for us is an opportunity to meet the ecosystem, to meet some of our competitors, and mostly to meet the customers and prospects. A lot of HR leaders are going to be there to learn about innovation. I think that for many of organizations coming to a full year of productivity after a couple of years marked by COVID uh, is a time of rethinking about the future of their business, coupled with uh, hype and uh, promise and peril of AI, a lot of people are anxious. They're anxious to understand how they can come back to full productivity when employees have really changed the way that they work with remote and hybrid work, with a lot of um, core HR processes really changing through the pandemic, but with more things to do, potentially on tighter budgets than ever. And a lot of HR leaders are going to be there to come look for solutions. So for us as a vendor in this space, it's a great opportunity to go and listen to our customers and understand what sort of value does they want from their AI systems. Our core system, um, the talent intelligence platform that we developed at Reacher and AI helps organizations hire faster, develop their talent better, and keep the best employees longer. We do that by really helping organizations shift into this mindset of becoming skills-based organizations. What our system does is it allows an organization to really connect with its existing HR tech stack and imbue it with the power of talent intelligence by looking at all these different systems and uh, being able to really understand the skills language and the skills framework associated with both candidates and employees so that you can identify the right candidates if you have a screening problem you can tap hidden talent pools if you have a sourcing problem so you can do career passing and succession planning for existing employees and you can plan individual training pathways to make sure that the organization of skill sets that are required actually match the individual pathways of the employees so for us unleash is all about meeting real world leaders that have real world problems and that are eager to innovate and modernize. They understand the power of AI, but they want to make sure that they're selecting the right ones. And uh, I look forward to meeting uh, many of the listeners and meeting many of our clients and prospects so that we can hack it away. Excellent, Shay. Excellent. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, it's exciting for, for those that are going to be able to be in attendance. Unfortunately, I won't be able to, but I'm loving the time we've had together today to just scratch the surface here. Now we have two questions that we ask our our, um, our guests each time. So let me go for the first one right now. Shay, in one minute or less, can you share one piece of advice or some direction you were given by a mentor, leader or colleague that inspired you to perform at a higher level in your career? Yes, of course. And um, I would quote my um, good friend and CEO of my previous company, Cultura, Ron, was a wonderful CEO and he and I uh, had many nights talking about how we produce value and Ron always reminded everybody in the team and myself to really focus on customer value. In whatever we do, in our case, uh, many years of developing software and Retrain is also developing a software solution, but other people might be developing a tool, a service, hardware, it doesn't matter. You have to really focus on producing customer value. What is it? that your customers, whether they are consumers or businesses, doesn't matter. What is it that your customers can do with your product that they cannot do without it? Question one. Question two is what could they do with your product that they cannot do with the competition? And if you can answer both of those questions, then you're honing in on the value. And if you hone in on the value, the rest of the business is going to figure itself out. Don't bother with issues of margin and scale and with bank technology or anything like that earlier on in the business just focus on value you'll have plenty of time to later really uh, focus on the other things and increase your performance level even further excellent 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 advice so the last question that i have for you is from a culture and people processes perspective what does a high performing company mean to you for me a high performing company means a company that is customer centric and data centric Every function in the organization, it doesn't matter whether these are people in finance or R&D or sales or marketing or operations or product or G&A or any other department in the company. You have to be focused on the customers and you have to use data to take decisions. If you can meet both of those demands, I think you're going to be a high performance organization. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. And uh, Shy, you're not going to believe this. That takes us to the end of this particular chit chat. Before we do wrap up, though, uh, why don't you share with our listeners how they can learn more and connect with you? And also, of course, how can they uh, how can they find out more about all the cool things happening over at retrain.ai? So I would recommend to all of our listeners uh, go and visit our website, www.retrain.ai. And we have a big uh, resource section with blogs and news and sign up for our newsletter. We try, uh, we promise not to spam you too much, but actually provide insight and uh, industry resources and things like that. If anybody wants to talk to me directly, just email me, shy.david, S-H-A-Y dot D-A-V-I-D at retrain.ai. And I'm always happy to meet and listen and talk and buy and sell and do business because I think that it's an exciting time in the industry and uh, happy to connect. Perfect. Well, uh, Shai, this is the second time that you and I have got to have a conversation in, in a fairly quick turnaround. Uh, there was an episode on the HR Chat Show recently, um, and that's because I think you're awesome, and I'm hoping we can find more ways to, to interview you again very soon. Um, keep doing what you're doing, sir. But for now, on behalf of Chris and myself, thanks very much for being our guest. Thank you for listening to the People and Performance Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.